We are the assembly of God. Let's talk about this just a little bit. The Greek word throughout the New Testament that's translated church is ekklesia. Many of you know that word. You've heard that word all of your Christian life. The ecclesia of Christ, the gathering together of the body of believers. In Ephesians, the first chapter, the 22nd verse, it uses the word ecclesia, and it uses it throughout the New Testament, which was written in Greek originally. And it means to call somebody out or to call a group out, to call some people out. All right. So in Ephesians 1.22, it says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of who? The church. Now, notice, it's not for our personal benefit. Okay, I want you to see this. This is huge. Because in our movement, people will memorize scriptures about how the Lord's going to provide for them, how they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them, how they can be healed, how they can be saved, how they can be transformed, how they can receive all the things that are under the, the Abrahamic covenant, all the things that are in the New Testament. But here, if you'll notice, the authority of Christ as the head over everything is there for the benefit of a group. It's a group. It's not for us as individuals. I take that back. It's for us as individuals as we are in the group. Do, do you see it? All right. So we don't emphasize that at all anymore. We emphasize you can get your miracle. You know what? The church can get the miracle. And to the degree that you're connected, you get miracles. Oh, you can get your healing. Claim your healing, brothers and sisters. All right. Well, those benefits are for the church. All right. So this is a body of Christ thing, and this is a flow thing. And so we've got loads of people, hundreds of thousands of people, totally disconnected with the body of Christ, purely going from space to space to space, not knowing people's names, not knowing people's kids, not knowing people's lives, and wondering why things are dysfunctional around them. It's because the concept here is a group of people that's being called out from a larger group. So we have the general population of the earth, and then God calls people, and some people respond, and those people are the church. So, so this is a group called for a special purpose. We're called out of the world through faith in Jesus Christ for the purposes of God. And that's why God heals us so that we can do those purposes. That's why God prospers us so that we can do those purposes. They are the purposes of the church. They aren't purposes designed for Ted and Gail Haggard exclusively. They are purposes designed for Ted and Gail Haggard in the church. Because Jesus was exalted to the right hand of God the Father so that he could be the head of the church. Does everybody see that? And do you see what a hyper-individual emphasis, how destructive that will be? See, it used to be that when people looked at American Christianity, they would see the Baptists and the Lutherans and the Nazarenes and the Episcopalians and the different ones until we had television and radio ministry. With television and radio ministry, those groups weren't supportive of what some of the guys were saying on radio and television. And they wanted them filtered, but those guys were independent, strong men and women. And so they went for Sally, and they went for George, and they went for Bill, and they went for Bob. And all of a sudden, we became a, a group that was, that was focused on individual ministry instead of seeing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit with, through the group and within the group. So when the New Testament was written, it used the word ecclesia every time the word church is translated into English. And in the secular world, when the Bible was being written, when it, it, they used the word ecclesia too, but it meant a government group that made decisions and executed authority. So in other words, 
if a government group would get together and say, we're going to do this in Ephesus, then that was the ecclesia. See? All right, so Paul and the other Bible authors took the word ecclesia and said, this is a governing group. All right, so you would have a parliament. That would be an ecclesia. Congress would be an ecclesia. The city council would be an ecclesia. Do you follow this? If city council says, we're going to pave this street, this street, and this street, that's a government body that makes a decision. Are all of you following this? This is very, very important. Look at your neighbor and say, now this is important. Okay, say that with enthusiasm. This is important. Okay, so, so our county commissioners, that's an ecclesia. Our, our general assembly up here that meets in Denver to make state decisions for us, that is an ecclesia. Congress, the Senate and the House voted on the uh, tax bill. Okay, those were decisions by an ecclesia. Now they've got a compromise on the bill. That will be a decision by an ecclesia. Okay, so those government bodies have power. Those government bodies have authority. Those government bodies make decisions about how much water pressure you have at your house. They make decisions about how many police officers are in your community. They make decisions about how your life's going to be. They make decisions about whether or not you can build that wall or not. They make decisions about how wide the street is in front of your house. And they make decisions about whether your toilet's going to flush or not. Okay? These government bodies make decisions about the quality of plastic in your glasses that you're wearing right now. Okay? These government bodies, the difference between Haiti and the United States of America is what the government bodies do. So people say, oh, it's just politics. Everything's politics. Politics makes the difference about whether you have the freedom to go to church or whether you're forced to go to a mosque or you're going to be killed. The g g politics decides how much freedom you have in the education of your children. Politics decides how, how uh, natural gas works in our city systems. Politics is very important, and it's all decided through ecclesias. It's all decided through gathering together of governmental bodies that have authority to make a decision. I'll give you some illustrations of it. Acts, the 19th chapter. Remember, that's the story in Ephesus when they were all upset about Paul preaching and they wanted to worship uh, Artemis of the Ephesians, the, the, the um, local goddess, and everybody was all upset about Paul. In verse 32, it says... Inside, the people were all shouting some one thing and some another. Everything in this assembly, other translations say the assembly, was in a confusion. In fact, most of them didn't even know why they were there. So that assembly, that assembly, this is talking about Congress, okay? That, that assembly, did, that assembly was the ecclesia. They had gathered together. Now notice down in verse 39. And if there were complaints about other matters, they can be settled in a legal ecclesia. All right, so if somebody breaks into your house right now and takes all your stuff out of it, and you get home and you see it sitting in your neighbor's uh, garage, you're going to be able to settle that through an ecclesia. There will be a governing authority that will settle that. All right, so these governing authorities have power. They have, there was a lot of debate about health care, a lot of debate about taxes, a lot of debate about those things, and there should be debate about those things. Those are ecclesias. They're gathering together, and the reason people get mad about them is because they matter. So if you have a group of communists meeting in Beijing to make a decision about China, the decisions they make matter because they have power. And they affect what life is like. They affect airplane schedules. They affect uh, petroleum production. They uh, affect all kinds of things. That's the ecclesia. Acts 1941. Then he dismissed them, them being the assembly, and they dispersed. And so the root meaning of the word we habitually translate church is a legal or government assembly. 
It's illegal. Follow this, everybody. Pay attention to me this morning. It's very important for us to understand this. The ecclesia is a legal government assembly that has power, that has authority, and that has makes decisions. You and makes decisions. You and I have been trained. We have that authority. 